All right, Colonel Sanders, here I come. What a hunk. Well, thank you, count me out. <laughs> I know, the, the chicken suit really accentuates my everything. I didn't hang. All right. Just because it says load game doesn't mean I've played before. Believe it or not. Let me know if it's too quiet or too loud. I've never, it might surprise you, but I've never streamed this game before. All right, here we go. <clears throat> you guys as excited as I am? Welcome, chef. Before we get started, tell us your name. <laughs> Dadam is back. Is Colonel a woman? No. <laughs> Nothing I know of. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been in their pants yet, so I can't confirm or deny, but... Dadam's back. Oh, look at that crispy goodness. Look at those buttery buns. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. There's a cat and butt on it. <laughs> Lyra's butt is on the... Th that's one of our cats. All right, anyway, Lyra. You're breaking the mood, cat! Like, what is that? <clears throat> The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in this moment forever. I need this alarm clock. Or you could wake up now. 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 Your first day of culinary school is, is no time to sleep in. Oh, I have options. Ooh, this is already better than Greedfall. Smack that clock. Up and at him. Throw the clock out the window. Stay in bed forever. I'm gonna throw it out the window. Freaking, well, listen to this thing. You slept through the school year and gave up on the once a lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> I do, Barada. Uh, game over. <laughs> Tell me, thought it was something else. I do, Marcy. GG. That's great. <laughs> I'll give up or let's try that again. All right, let's try that one more time. Man, died already. This is the Dark Souls of fast food chicken eating games. <laughs> Death Plus. Uh, let's try this again. <sighs> I'm good. Alright. You sleep sloppy as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your monster student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in this moment forever. Or you can wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. <laughs> Star Trek. All right, smack that clock up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, mm -hmm. thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, the Academy for Learning. Kirk. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Oh, I got that covered. Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You need to take this seriously or you allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. No, I already learned my lesson. <laughs> That's game over, man. Top Room World, so the PC, through the tutorial, okay? Yeah, let me know how you like it, Brada. It's an awesome game. Not as good as this game, but. I better make sure to arrive, or arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth brushed. Hair equals combed. Pits equal deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. You're, you confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. Just what you needed to get your blood flowing. Nothing like... Look at the steam on that biscuit. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, the Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Dadam. Are you excited for the first day? Oh, that's probably not what she sounds like. Good morning, Dadam. You excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Miriam is a heavy smoker since she was four. Post in the background of that room. Uh, that's just what I'm into. Don't judge me, Tanek. 
It's my room. Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that. This morning I made breakfast for myself, but well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great. But with University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three day only semesters. Whoa, three days only. I'm afraid of being left behind, never catching up. Hey, Miss Fortune, thank you for the 100 bits. It was a quick sandbox, I don't know, Gar. How do you, Gar? Thank you again for the host, Miss Fortune, thank you for the bits. Sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? I want to. I want to know the gossip. Yeah, let's talk about school. Go schools. Semesters are three days long. It's hard to see Miriam like this, and frankly, quite exhausting. Rather than dwell on her anxiety, you try to change the subject to something more interesting. All summer, you've been hearing rumors about a dreamy, enigmatic, mystery student who is enrolled at this school. It's him. Yeah, it's a little worrisome, but you'll be fine. Now, what about this mystery student we read about on the school message board? Any new deets? Oh, get this. I heard his name is Harland, and he's no ordinary student. They say he has powers. He had them ever since he was born. From an egg. <laughs> hey, Ted, it's anniversary stream. How's it going, Ted? Uh, this is how I always stream. An egg? Like a chicken? Don't be ridiculous. She's crying, man. I think that's tears. That thing about having powers, it would line up with some of the other rumors I've heard. Yeah, I feel a little cocky today. Like I heard he once fought a bear with just a smile. I didn't problem, child. Did you like Phoenix Point? I did like Phoenix Point. You both sigh, thinking about a student so handsome that the laws of phys physics don't dare apply to him. Dreamy. Goodbye forever, Tet. See you later. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. G-H Ashley, by the way. I don't know what Ashley sounds like. <laughs> I just I just had a memory. I do Mog. Oh, we hate Ashley's here at the stream. Those of you that are named Ashley, I'm sorry, but if I if I had the decision to leave you on a planet with a bomb exploding and you die instead of my best friend, I would do so. Just like in Mass Effect. Spoilers for Mass Effect nine years ago or whatever. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Dadam shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Ugh, I can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. Who's Ashley? How you doing, Jamie? Not just a chicken hood. I got the whole outfit. I'm in full cock mode. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. <laughs> We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Cross quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. <laughs> no lie, they're rocking glutes. Ahem, <laughs> uh -huh. Van Van? You rang rang. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Brad Pitt. Sounds like Cletus. <laughs> you've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam. 
but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. Van Van's shirt? <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us as a professor. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. <laughs> With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, losers. So you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. He farts in your general direction. Oopsie! I think it's broken! You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you! I think you mean thank you. My name's Pop and I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone when like this also be a student at school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Uh, hi, Pop. I'm Dadam, so... Are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me? Uh, it's just you, Miriam. It's just you. Yep. <laughs> I've already become the datum. I think it's just you, Miriam. You both shrug your shoulders. We're following him into the building. Stands at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in, keep themselves busy, chit-chatting. Scruffy-looking pooch takes his place on a podium at the front of the class. Adorable. The dog is talking to us? I, don't, I wasn't prepared for a dog voice. I don't know what to do. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. <laughs> Who is this unreasonably adorable pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be adorable and fluffy, but I demand respect. I don't know who that is. Scooby Doo. No, this is a very old, wise dog. He's supposed to be British. Oh, he needs to be British too? Uh, dog for a professor. This is the best school ever. Guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. It's him! It's him! It's him! I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then he walks in. <laughs> You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student. His remarkable goatee. He had. See, the, the Colonel knows. Colonel knows. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. Still. Sorry, I was pleased for a moment. It's him. It's... What was Sprinkle's voice? I've actually had to go back to being British. I don't know how to be Brit a British dog. It isn't my favorite student. No, wait, that's, that's Ashley. Old Brit. If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. That's Harland? Please, call me the Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone's looking at you. You're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be Sweaty Sweats a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. I do BK. 
You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? You take a moment to clean yourself up. It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Professor Dong steps in to settle the class down, set some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. So when does chest work? Uh, people can donate their leftover Twitch Prime loot and uh, other people can claim it at some point. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Great, right, Ted? I should be a voice actor. Watch out, Wayne. <laughs> Just then, another student enters the classroom, interrupts the professor's rousing speech. This is the first take, too, by the way. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. Hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man, and you're sure you're even in the right place. I don't remember what his voice was. Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school. I wish you... With you as my teacher, my pet. Everyone stares in blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students. That tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across the town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student sprinkles ref referencing who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> the class bursts into laughter. <laughs> oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but to what kind? Chicken snack. Chicken snack. I got, I got a whole bucket right here, little buddy. All right, chicken snack it is. Yeah, and we just started ours today, BK, so I'll probably do it maybe one one night a week or something. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. <laughs> the opposite of King Midas. His favorite. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for new star students. The furry professor- this is a lot shorter game, too. It's like an hour long, Tet. Immediately devours the snack, leaving your hands slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushed to claim their favorite seats, you left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Dadam. There's still a seat here. I don't remember what Colonel Sanders' voice was. I'm sorry. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Two good options, but which will you choose? Hey, friend, I've been sitting by you my entire life. And look at this guy's goatee, am I right? All right, here we go. He moved to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me the seat. But we had two rules. Do all you can, do it the best you can. 
It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. It's so inspiring. A little off topic, if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz! Guy above the court board? I'm not sure. It looks like a... I don't know. What'd you say? Yay, a quiz about me. Oh wait, that was the dog's voice. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life as a culinary steward. Pup quiz, if you will. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. He co Here comes question number one. Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? <laughs> Meh, depends. Extremely. Look at you, Pop. Doesn't matter at all. Um, extremely. Always wash your hands. Seven. Play a game about being the god of chickens. You're dead. Yeah, check it out. Cannibalism. We've been talking about cannibalism forever, so. Ditch my boyfriend. That was my boyfriend. I was just my childhood friend. Best friend she, my best friend forever, Miriam. BFF. That's what they said. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you, I only read one F. My bad. It's like, no, that's not my boyfriend. We play our cards right. We'll come out of this with one, though. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to feather. Night vision goggles. A slam dunk. Fast I was eating it. I know, right? Feather. That's right. Two for two. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork? A meat tenderizer? Or as my wife has suggested in the background, a spork? That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything. As long as it is prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat? Sorry, Rakes. I'm not, I'm not using camel meat. A pancake that looks like a silly face. Anything. That's right. Could you answer anything and you'll be right? I don't know. Is Sprinkles a good boy? No. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's apparently good. See, there is, there's Rakes. <laughs> He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy. Yes. He's the best boy. Look at him. It's fried chicken. It's working. This game is just a massive ad for KFC. And I'm probably not helping dressed as a delicious chicken with my delicious bucket right in your face eating delicious chicken. All right. That's right. Your score is perfect score. Five of five. Wow. Be honest. Did you cheat? You look to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you. Tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Oh, you see that? They have hearts coming off instead of eggplants. You guys remember the eggplants? Mm -hmm. Reported for terms of service. Nah, I'll switch staff as at TwitchCon right now. You can do whatever you want. Not that I'm doing anything wrong, but... Hot diggity datum. <laughs> hey, whoa, I like that. <laughs> hot diggity datum. That's my new catchphrase. <laughs> Thank you, Colonel Sanders game. Well, hot diggity datum. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that for performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Huh? <laughs> your mouth waters. Easy. Just always crit and always dodge. Simple. <sighs> Thanks, Wayne, and thanks, Crescent. Uh, thanks to your interruption, I was able to take a drink of tea. So I do appreciate it. Thank you, Crescent. <clears throat> do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. I don't remember what students... Everyone can have... Can I have your attention? He'll just have a plain voice. Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize. He'll, maybe he'll, be, he'll be a sad guy. No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. See, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch! She said shh. In honor of the new semester, 
I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. <clears throat> that must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see that what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but where the rumor's true is this. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the lights. <laughs> Piled high are huge breasts, bread and fried to a crispy golden finish. It actually only says chicken. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. My brain inserted breasts. <laughs> uh, man, it's hot in here. I'm getting extra crispy. Whew. Huge tracts of land. Carl Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, Stop thinking, start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for perfect fried chicken. Sounds like that voice would have, like, he'd just put baby at the end of everything or something. My calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors, baby. <laughs> you look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. What? You think we want your stupid r secret recipe, dude? Pshaw. Nah, my dude, nah. <laughs> that's Van Man's voice. He's Cletus. He looks just like Cletus. Yeah. He looks like Cletus thinks Cletus looks. <laughs> this is what Cletus imagines himself looking like, only with overalls, like when he's when he's leaning up against his pickup truck. This is inner, Cle inner monologue Cletus. It's just, uh... Draft in a last will and testament in case uh, one of them ingredients is poison. Got him! <laughs> Looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. Hang on, I gotta stop the stream for a second. Rakes and other Canadian people. In, can in Canada, do you guys say scorched instead of burned? Like when, when someone, like, you know, makes a joke at someone's expense, turns it around on them, and you go, burn! Because I was watching a Canadian sitcom. And every single time you would say burned, they say scorched. <laughs> and I was like, scorched? No. So it's just that show rakes. You say burned too. So it's just that um, that corner gas show. All right. Resume. Resume. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up. She suddenly takes a different approach. I don't remember her voice. Yeah. And I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary. Today, I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame. With cooking skills like this, she wants him all to herself. Hey, Nathan. Welcome in to an every Saturday stream. Same. In 2004, when the show aired, Scorched was common, but now you use Burn. Gotcha. Oh, please. Well, Van Van the Man Man, <laughs> if you don't want any, I'll take it. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. Van Van's voice is great. What's happening? It's anniversary stream, Nathan. Uh, on anniversary stream, we try to date as many men as we can every year. <laughs> Uh, so we're trying to speed run Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I'm working on speed running Colonel Sanders. We can, we're trying to see how long we can go from bucket to bed. Bucket to bed in 90 minutes. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Bucket to... Yeah, <laughs> count me on. <laughs> Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in, baby. Bucket to bedroom, 30 minutes flat. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. Serene said, 
That is amazing, super glue. How you doing, clock? How you doing, super glue? <laughs> it's amazing. So wait, what was your answer? Hang on, super glue. I, one more second. So your wife came in and sees this stream. She sees a guy dressed as a chicken holding a KFC bucket and making up terrible voices as he's trying to sleep with Colonel Sanders. What do you say to your wife? I mean, do you just come out? It's like, that's what I want to spend my Saturday night doing. I mean, I know we only get a finite number of weekends in our lifetimes, so I'm, I'm going to spend the next few hours on this Saturday night watching some random guy on the internet try to, uh, you know, see if he can get with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> All I can do is laugh. Well, I appreciate you guys being here, seriously. One week with Ronald McDonald. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transport you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. That's 11 flavors, man. Savor the moment. Everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. <laughs> um... Hey, let's just let's just have chat take the take the wheel. Option one, two, or three. The first one to five, and I'll choose that one. I don't care which one it is. One, two, or three. Go. We have one for three. One for two. Two, two, three, three, two, three. No one likes one. Two ones. Up. Oh, three one. All right, we're gonna swim towards the light. Thank you guys. Somewhere up ahead, a bright light beckons you. The flavors are so intense. You become wrapped up in them. Unable to resist, you reach forward or toward the light. It grabs your hand and pulls you closer. Closer. Float your boat and left the room. Until your fingernet, fingertips connect with the end of everything. You are forever lost in the land of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no datum now. There is only herbs and spices. Through Mir Though Miriam tries to revive you, she cannot. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken was so good, I died. It killed me. Turns out, turns out, spice number 11, it's cyanide. It is poison. Fan Fan was right. Fan was right all along. The 11th spice is poison. It's just cyanide. I don't know. So that green? Wait, where's it gonna take us back to? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> it's like the Dark Souls you died, only like bubbly and, and gay. In a good way, I don't mean that. Not that there's any bad gay. I'm gonna just back away from that. Thought that we, yeah, happy. Come on, give me that finger looking good stuff again. Come on, Colonel, put it in my mouth. Oh no, 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 no. Uh. <laughs> uh. I like how you look at me when you realize. <laughs> Alright, we're back. I'm gonna try to figure out all the flavors this time. Hi, doing Fat Fred. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe. Pepper? Too obvious. O oregano? Basil? Maybe, but th there's something else. There's something else. Something dark. Something <laughs> spicy. You dig deeper, deeper, deeper. Yes, even deeper until you find it. Could it be redacted? <laughs> he really did it! How bold, how adventurous to use redacted. 
You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revolution alo revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. With great chicken power comes great chicken responsibility. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach the Colonel. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Yeti, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it, Yeti. Anything for a fellow chef, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly was on that chicken? <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors. They will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I, I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of... So my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush, baby? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up this easily. Give it up for me, Colonel Sanders, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use redacted. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Redacted? Wow! You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some of if you searched. And redacted definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you are two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared while everyone else is still in the cafeteria. You decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. That ain't all I got that big. <laughs> I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Romance novel going wrong. <laughs> Alone together for the first time, you f figure how or now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Nag him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be not modest. Or be modest but thoughtful. I'm going to be modest and thoughtful this time. I'm going to go with what you're supposed to do because I don't want to die again. <laughs> oh, eggplants are out. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you got his attention. The flavors are complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery is perfect. I uh, appreciate the compliment, Dad. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should have named ourselves Popeyes. <laughs> we should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. Step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they can need. What clip is that, Ted? <laughs> Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh, no. We have to show our stuff? What if I totally blow it? Chick-fil-A. You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up. Pair off. Guess. <laughs> I've never had Bojangles, but yeah, I agree, Hightala. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control her yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. <laughs> hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? 
A team of two, that is. Me and you. That wasn't clear. Cooking as a chicken? Well, I'm a giant chicken, and I'm eating some delicious... Uh, a bucket of delicious KFC. That's right, Rob. Chicken on chicken action. <laughs> Wanna be my partner? Sure, Dadam. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Uh-oh. Make some of your popcorn chicken. Hello, new partner. Beep boop. Bzz. Oh my. Two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward. That's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? I'm going to give her the robot. Look at this kid. It's going to turn out he's some sort of whiz kid, though. He's like... He's not all there, but he's like a savant when it comes to, like, chicken. <laughs> I'm gonna give him the robot. Give her the robot. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. <laughs> Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Bzzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> Clank judders, and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Yeti, you're wearing a KFC shirt? Awesome. <laughs> Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy. You don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Just powered up Skynet. Sprinkles and he works in the kitchen. <laughs> oh. Wait, is he going to steal our recipe? No, we're going to trade. Anyway, anyway, mashed potatoes. So good. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Now, that's, that's the thing, though. I could eat this bucket. You, you fill this with mashed potatoes and gravy and give me just like a ladle. I'm in heaven. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe, just maybe, mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy, baby. <laughs> I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. <laughs> mashed potatoes. More like smashed potatoes. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Being perfect produce is a passion of mine. Look like, looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush? On Colonel Sanders. You say that sometimes and see if anyone notices. We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business, Ashley. Yeah, Ashley. Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off of my man. <laughs> is someone call for me? Where is this music? Van Van. <laughs> you didn't see that. That's my actual head. <clears throat> Ugh, no. Jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Dadam's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? 
Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looks like Dadam was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is, these young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day, you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concord creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that's positioned itself at your station. Uh, uh, back, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, back, Bach. thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Who disappeared? Oh yeah. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for the colonel, if you don't watch out. Ashley's really going at it. Going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. What do you guys think? First one to five. Do we choose one or two? Twitch plays. I love you, Colonel Sanders. One, two, two, one, 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 two, one. All right, it's one. I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements. From contracts to handshakes, I took on Datum as my partner. For this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Datum's natural talent, or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles and hope that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. <laughs> Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. This game is so bad, it's great, I know. <laughs> I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. I didn't Irish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out, you grab hold of it. But he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world, it just stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free, baby. Together. You dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spork full up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. It is I Irish, absolutely. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something! Do something! Scooping up a finger full, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Dadam. 
We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. <clears throat> Batam strikes again. <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> Can I have the potato face? Van Damme rushes back over, a cover dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe, blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. So student now is just uh, emo, I guess. He doesn't look quite emo or goth, but I guess what? Me for too long. That ends now. Conformist. It is I who will have for respite. You will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It's been eaten. Uh, I think I left something in the oven. Well, I don't feel so good. It killed him? <laughs> oh my god. Van Van's a murderer! <laughs> Everyone step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. What is Pop winces in pain for just a moment, <laughs> then it almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison. <laughs> <laughs> the entire class gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. <laughs> the immortal simpleton. Oh my god. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. <laughs> this guy, this is Pop is you. This guy's just dead. The other student, he never had a name. He's just dead. And the, the sprinkles the teacher. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. And your voice immediately. Trust me, it's just science. <laughs> Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. It's not a big deal that this guy died. I guess not. They just don't care. They just leave him there. What? Like for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark. More than a little spooky. A child just died there. <laughs> Colonel Sanders stands in the quads in neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him. In a way that you find inspiring. <laughs> Someone dies in the kitchen. Uh, walk the chef home. Perfect sense. Pop is a dupe and Ox not included. That seems true. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Dad. Something I need to tell you. It, it's the murderer! He's not in jail or anything! Van Van just always pops up. I just now realize his hair is shaped like a star. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream. 
that one day I would be the greatest chef in the, w the world has ever seen. And every day I've been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wish, wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you, shut up. <laughs> I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff, be the star of the story. Oh, are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. <laughs> also, I saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. The sport monster is here to fight a hero. What the crap? <coughs> Are we all on drugs? <laughs> Guys, what was in my chicken? I thought the 11th ingredient was cyanide. Now I'm thinking it was like DMT. You know, maybe we got some magic mushroom as the 11th ingredient. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. Hey, everyone. Yeah, how's it, how's it going? It's, it's anniversary night. We always date people on anniversary night. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my god, connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be afraid of me! Because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Attack! You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? I choose Cook with Love. Cook with Love does one damage. It's probably Ashley. <laughs> that's a, that's when, when there's a full moon, Ashley turns into the sport monster. It just got real. It's really a choice. That attack really upset the sport monster. Sport monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. I'll see what defending does this time. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do you. S Sport Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? I should have defended this time. I'm going to defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation? Bu buff up. Two. I don't know. I don't know, Seraph. <laughs> How's buff up a defense? You draw energy into your arms, thinking back on all of the stirring you did in the kitchen as a child. Your muscles go super swole, and you're ready to take on anything. We just went from smole to swole. <laughs> Sport Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Sport Monster uses Utilitensil. You take two, damages, two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Let's go back on the offensive. You decide to go on the attack. Is that a chicken emote? Count me out. Let's use Chow Down. Chow Down does two damage. A powerful blow. Sport Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Sport Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded Edge. The villain. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons energy of a thousand chickens. <laughs> Pot Pop Power Pinch! Pot Pop Power Pinch does ten damage. Sport Ma Monster is defeated. Yeah, you saved me. An injured Sport Monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy, finish him, or spare this wretched beast. Now I, I have a pretty good idea of what people are going to choose, but let's find out, guys. Should we should we finish him Mortal Kombat style, but with our faces, or should we spare him? Thunder Chicken, one, 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 one. <laughs> 
One, one, one. All right. No mercy. No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. Oh, there's some twos now, though. This monster messed with the wrong chef. Attack. You ready your final attack? You'll never survive my student debt loan destruction. <laughs> Too real. Student loan debt destruction does 10 damage. Oh, hot diggity datum, yeah. <laughs> Smart monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. You continue to surprise me, Dadam. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. Triggered, mashed. <laughs> it's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. It's the necro. Nah, never mind. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> you open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. I was gonna say it's the Necronomicoc. <laughs> we have found the Necronomicoc. It's a great book of chicken. Um, <clears throat> the Cluckernomicon, the Necro Cockanom. Oh my god, <laughs> Necro Cockanom. Yeah, there we go. Necro Cluckercon. Oh my lord. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm, Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Don't let them unplug that, please. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him. But you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your cover is being pulled up over you. And you're tucked in tightly. Let them unplug it. I mean, it's just, it's a light. I would just look slightly darker. <laughs> Rob. Miss Fortune, thank you for the 100 bits. Do you want an ancestor? Because this is how you get an ancestor. <laughs> Fortune, thank you for the 100 bits. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> what is going on? You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? Shikinjutsu in the background. Uh, voyeuristic. Uh. <laughs> you lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders' cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used Redacted. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the sport monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um, I think I might like Clank. What? <laughs> like him? Like, like, like? I, I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like, yeah, I wonder if we had chose Pop, if this would have happened with that, that kid instead. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a total, totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king... 
at a school he didn't even go to and was also the con also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade what? he was the convertible what <laughs> hey elder golem what is this game this is a game where we are trying to hook up with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't go him. It's stream anniversary. We always do some weird things for the stream anniversary. It's a tradition now. Um, I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. Good luck, though. Thanks. That's right, Tet. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school. The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. You're a thing now. Next year, hint. I don't think so. We, we definitely connected yesterday. Haha, <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? This is my best friend, by the way. <clears throat> Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if it's not, if he's not into me, why'd he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Huh? However, you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that, a secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? That's <laughs> it. Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some. Show me what he meant. <laughs> Miriam, I think this was a drug dealer. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Is this Willy Wonka? <laughs> Please, Miriam. Don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with him and brought them home. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me. And the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. Opium cocaine. <laughs> I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Yeah, but we haven't told her that. Mm. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. I'm cooking episode of Futurama. <laughs> what do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? No, I'm going to make up an ingredient. She made fun of me. Number one. <laughs> I'm, I'm making one up this time. My best friend, when I was like, I think me and Colonel Sanders had a deep connection. She was like, ha ha ha. Sure, loser. <laughs> By the way, best friend of mine, tell me your secrets. Yeah. Two. It was a typo. <laughs> you quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know how about... It was Eye of Newt. I know. Sounds like some kind of witch's potion. What can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing. You figure that you've satisfi satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. It's probably not good. For you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people. You're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. <laughs> He's coming in on a horse. <laughs> He's arriving at school. Stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him. All right, guys, which one is it? Number one, number two. One for one. one. She said one also. Oh, uh, two barely one. All right, run to him. I did count yours, by the way. 
You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are. What if I get trampled and lose again? It would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of a stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel. My Colonel. However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, <laughs> kicking you directly in the face. <laughs> The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh, Dadam, I am here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end. So you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. Behold the infinite malignity of the stars. And that name is... But before you can continue, you suddenly awake. No game over this time. Ah, oh, jeez. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Shenanigans is an understatement. <laughs> How you doing, sir? Welcome in. Tending to me like a chicken tender. Arousing me with his spices. Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Lean in for a kiss. All right, guys, which one? <laughs> two, two. My wife says two. Breaks two. One. One or two. Two. First one of five. Two. One. One. Two. All right. <laughs> uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You've known him for a day. Are you really sure? I guess you must be. You put your arms around Colonel Sanders' neck and pull him in for a kiss. Always compliment the horse. But he turns his face and you awkwardly kiss his ear. You can feel him shudder. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, you clearly mistook his passion. Compassion for love. Your soul crawls inside of itself and you instantly die of embarrassment. <laughs> on a second a, a horse <laughs> a horse kicks us in the face you know how strong horses are a horse kicks us square in the face and we live but then we die of embarrassment because we try to kiss him <laughs> body oh, it's a free game Matt let me know what happens <laughs> the horse put me on death's door and then my embarrassment the heart attack from the embarrassment killed us gave you the heart attack yeah <laughs> Try again. It's very close. <laughs> Miriam was right. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All the way back to the bed. What? All right. <laughs> Die of embarrassment. We died three times in this game. I've died three times more on this, or three more times on this game than I did on the final boss in Greedfall's hardest difficulty. Am I saying this game is more difficult than Greedfall? Yes. Am I saying this game is better than Greedfall? Also, yes. You can't even do a deathless, torchless Kentucky Fried Dating Simulator. There he is. All right, let's stand back and admire his majestic glory. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear. Oh, God, I wish that was me. <laughs> Sending it running free into the countryside. This is a KFC production. The game is... I have no idea, Matt. Probably not, but I haven't. You're so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Boy! <laughs> oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry. He knows his way home. 
You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What a horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. Dang it. That's not what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. What's the over under mark for clips on views or number of clips? <laughs> oh, Dadam. Just gets really nervous around people they like. What? This isn't helping Miriam? I mean, uh, they got food poisoning and we're up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. She gives you a wink. Smile. As if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. Thanks, Ashcore. I'll take that as a compliment. How do you Ashcore? When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van. How is he not in prison? <laughs> Can't prove it. We saw Van Van kill a man. Van Van kill a man. Van Van kill a man man. <laughs> By the way, they're hiding. You know it must be really bad. Yeah, I know. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad. It's so horrible, it's great, yeah. I think that's a point, too. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulders. But he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature or act like you're not interested in them, but really try and get a closer look. Let's do that one this time. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. <gasps> Have they seen the ne necro cockanom? They got their hands on my necro cockanom. However, he knows you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you're up. You've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. <laughs> Thanks, fam, man. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding. And you instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found last night on the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him. We just noticed this as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing! <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey! Watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzzz, womp. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such a language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp, womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Bzzz. Van Van jumps to attack Clink. But Clink shocks Van Van. It's even flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse. Right? Beady foot once. Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class. Is, is he possessed? He has solid white eyes of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. 
Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. <laughs> After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to this lesson. Truly, you do. <laughs> I don't know, Ted. That's a good question. <laughs> the dog always comes up. You think he drags that Roman pedestal with him? Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was Chicken who first signed that name. What? But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Dadam? Naturally, this appears to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? A glass of water? A shimmering pepper? Or a dog biscuit? Alright guys, one, two, or three. First one to five. Two. So my wife says two. There's three threes. Four threes already. Okay, three has it <laughs> by a landslide. Because of the shape it's baked in, you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by Sprinkles. An example of his own culinary talents. Craps. You reach out for it. When? <laughs> oh, yeah, that is right. Ben Franklin. You got John Adams. Uh, John Hancock, who was the final one. And also Chicken. <laughs> Sprinkles jumps up and bites onto your cooking apron. What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Your apron is left in tatters. The entire class looks on in horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. I never even got to taste it. Can this be the end? Getting between a dog and his bone probably isn't a great choice. Game over. <laughs> Alright, well we've died four times. Does that mean you were eaten by him? No, we died of embarrassment. Oh, okay. You're good at that. It's fourth death. No way. Really? Oh no. This is the furthest back it's ever gone. No. You know what I can do during this? This will this will entertain me and obviously you. Mmm. You can really taste the redacted. I mean Redacted 2 is pretty overpowering. But. I mean, you still get a little bit of redacted. <laughs> Chicken looks phallic. It's just happy to see you, Rewanti. Is your chicken strip aroused or are you just happy to see me? Why not both? I bet I can click that up on top right, but I'm eating chicken. Uh, Why not both indeed? <laughs> Good chicken. Seriously. KFC. Good chicken. Could go buy a bucket full right now. It won't support the stream at all. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna eat the shimmering pepper. I think that was uh, the second most voted. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. Dream about okay, KFC where you are. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. Oh, we tripping. <laughs> My friend. Ooh. This guy again? 
I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh, you must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> Sorry. It's only I got some of that spice stuck in my throat. It's fine. I'll work through. <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... <coughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw, oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth! Now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Spice was slow. Spice expands consciousness. We just made a uh, pepper go extinct. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. Your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Prepare for trouble. <laughs> make it double. But it would be, what, with their voices? Prepare for treble. And hey, make it double. <laughs> double up on that treble. I'm Van Van, by the way. I'll be here all evening. <laughs> Today's lunch will be prepared via time competitive cook. Oh, that's Ashley. <laughs> she was She was in, uh, she, she, I didn't make a mistake. Ashley was uh, trying to sound like Van Van. Via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time. Step up and tell them, you're on. Yeah. Yeah. To protect, to protect this chicken from devastation. To unite 11 spices within our nation. What's wrong with his hand? Uh, you don't stand like this, Tet. This isn't your natural. <laughs> I'm Van Van. I'm Van Van. This is how I stand. You stand, stand. I'm Van Van. This is how I stand, stand. All right, let's do this. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, so be it. Look how huge it is. It's just perspective. You can use that kind of trick with a camera to make, like, your hands look bigger or... Your other hand look bigger. It's a trick to make your hands look more well endowed. I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Dad. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Hey, Mixie, how's it going? Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Oh, hi, Nar. How's it going? How's TwitchCon? Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Sportsing, yeah. Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the word, timer, ready. You're exhausted. What parallel universe did you just walk into? It's, it's stream anniversary. Every year on stream anniversary, uh, it's, yeah, Dadam Dates Dudes. So welcome back to Dadam Dates Dudes, uh, the second annual event. That's what I'm talking about. Aroo! <laughs> I stand corrected. The hard way builds... Solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away easily, baby. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. Hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure. And now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. You're feeling like you can really impress him again here. Can't believe they actually made it. It's just one huge advertisement for KFC, Lindsay. And it's doing a great job. I mean, I got a bucket. 
I haven't eaten KFC in five years, and here I am dressed as a chicken eating KFC out of a bucket while I'm trying to date Colonel Sanders. How you doing, Lindsay? Welcome in. Notice me, Sanders Senpai. The Sanders pie. <laughs> it's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Sit the party out and relax at home, recover a little. What the game's done quick. 4 a.m. Man. Think fast. It's a, if the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Uh, it always boils. Oh, what temperature does water boil at? 100 Celsius. That's right. But how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that? Ooh, 10 seconds. That's all we got. Winner gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. Sounds kind of like a gnome. Mm -hmm. You're going to need to season the chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Students, people mistakenly use it as a term for master. Sensei is master. How many herbs and spices did he say he used? 11. Child's play. Come on. What are you doing? Oh, okay. That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Hey, Robert. This is a game where we try to sleep with Colonel Sanders. Welcome in. <laughs> it's just a casual thing. This is our new uh, permanent... No, this game is probably about an hour and a half long. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've come... Or got some... Excuse me. <clears throat> basic steps going. It's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Trust. I don't know. Probably gratitude. Dadgummit. That's wrong. I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. Also, keep dying. Next question. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. That's that's pretty sad. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. <clears throat> uh, now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where does it come from? Deep beneath the surface of the Pacific, the shoulder of Orion, a small town where big dreams are born. What? You don't even have time to read it. That's wrong. This is a horrible time to start forgetting important things. <laughs> I wonder if your local KFC has corgi chefs. I hope so. You try to shut out the noises of the arena and focus on your cooking. What's that a success? Silence. That's right. When they taste your cooking, they will be so taken with it that they'll be unable to speak. Right, Rwanti? They don't employ corgi chefs. What's the point? You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Dadam. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take to fill a traditional Victorian bathing? What were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition. Agrr. You are stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> I know, right? You know what? Should you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Sorry, I forget the question. Uh, it's all you and Colonel Sanders. <laughs> they were all... I didn't even get to really see the answers. But they were all <laughs> me and Colonel Sanders. What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried check chicken? And delicate baked biscuits. Woof! Woof! You're really struggling to keep up. On the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Speed reading training game. <laughs> uh, yikes. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Where... You might not have any hands, but Dadam does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, 
<clears throat> you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand to the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Danim, no! But you're not fast enough. Your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way could turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone, stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Did it cosplay? How do you, Trev? <laughs> Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Dadam's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you've prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Dadam to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer a delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours a hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry... Jelly? Jelly? Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Simplicity is in your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <clears throat> oh, you. <laughs> does look really good. In an igloo. <laughs> as he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize the rage you feel. Put yourself between them. No, I'm going to internalize it this time. Your rage burns so intensely with your eyes that they burst into flames. Yeah, how you been, Ignu? The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. What the crap? Made by Dream Day Makers? Not that I know of. Embarrassed and ashamed of your poor performance, not to mention your crispy, fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. Try to move out of your house. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. But just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer, that small fire... We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. Failure is part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths, arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. What? That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got all it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, money, could deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus 
You can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. Something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Freaking pop. <laughs> Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Get so ripped by plucking chickens. <laughs> Hold the line. <laughs> <laughs> um hey guys though don't, don't. thanks silent kitten those of you coming from kitten stream welcome or welcome back uh you've probably already turned away from the stream at this point i mean you have been here long enough to see one frame uh if you're wondering what the crap's going on <laughs> uh it's our stream anniversary and every year on the stream anniversary we play some silly crazy things and tonight we are dating colonel sanders spicy <laughs> how you doing kitten Thank you again for the host of the raid. Feel free to hang out, lurk, partic to participate. Uh, I am dressed as a chicken. I'm also eating chicken out of a KFC bucket. Uh, not sponsored by KFC yet, but after after they see this. <laughs> All right. And this is just the first part of the stream. <clears throat> just your moment grows intimate. You're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spark Monster! Gorko, the Spark Monster, is here to fight a hero! Yeah, what? They missed an opportunity to have Gorko the Sporko. Is anyone else feeling a bit of deja vu? I'm sorry, Gorko, but I could have sworn we already battled you last night. That was Borko, my twin, and I, Gorko, am here to avenge them. Are you stronger than Borko? Well, we're twins, so no, not really. We're pretty much exactly equal in every way. Why do you ask? Colonel Sanders smirks. He is already on the same page as you. It's just that we beat Borko pretty easily, so I don't think you have much of a chance. Not to mention, I feel really guilty about that. If I could take it back, I would... I think what Dadam's saying. Can't we just be friends? Life's too short for making enemies. I suppose we really don't need to fight. It's just that I've got these pointy teeth and claws. Or mustache. Pierce Brosnan, wife. Says it's more Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Duluth. That's a compliment. As it says. Yeah, I gotcha. I do Duluth. All the better for enjoying tasty food. Surely you like to eat, don't we all? Of course I do! Inspiration strikes and you come up with a quick idea. Chomp on this! You toss a biscuit into Gorko's open mouth. He devours it and went, Why do I just have a biscuit? You must always have a biscuit on your person. Delicious! You're much nicer than the evil students who once upon a time turned me into this creature who stands here today. Why wouldn't you just have a biscuit? <laughs> who doesn't just have a biscuit? I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a chihuahua. What? <laughs> what but I was still a student at the school until one day, some mean kids with a magic spellbook cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook. Precisely. Borko used to have a copy, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. I didn't cozy. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. Now you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in this kitchen alive, life, Dad. Together, I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway. We can discuss. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like. But it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sander's home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure, if you approach it with the right attitude. 
Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there's something. It's just a side dish, but I've been tinkering with trying to find the right balance of flavor and texture. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up, and he starts to one wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy, maybe both perhaps. Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him, or keep it a secret just for you? I'm going to reveal it. I'm going to show it all to Colonel Sanders. God, Mixie. Reveal it. <laughs> You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. How you doing, Francisco? Magnificent. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw till just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Why does he have a funerary urn in the back? Look at him as a baby! Hang on! <laughs> Look at his baby picture. <laughs> that is awesome. I wish I had a goatee, a little white goatee when I was a baby. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later. Think back on the- He's gonna steal our recipe! Hang on! First, he's talking about his special chicken. And then we told him about Grandmama's perfect mashed potatoes. He tried those. And he's like, oh, I need to remember this. Now he's eating our creamy coleslaw. Now he wants to save the last bite. I'm on you, Colonel Sanders. Well, not yet, but we'll see. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Yeah, I know, Phelan. Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize now, or that now, would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Thank you, Craig. How's it going, Craig? God. This chicken, why did it eat me? Hey, Cam, welcome in. We're dating Colonel Sanders. How you doing, Cam? Tap on an item to discover more about the Colonel. Oh, we can actually figure out why there's a urn. All right, let's check it out. You take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. <laughs> Hey, Dark Love. Welcome back. How's it going, Dark Love? Going alright? Been getting over pneumonia. It's crazy, Craig. Poor guy. Tap on an item. Let's click on Colonel Sanders' big orange cock. <laughs> it's the name of a male chicken. It has no other connotation, wife of mine. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It's real. Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped on the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap on an item to discover more. All right. This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. Yeah, adult mother, wife. It's just a chicken. Get your head out of the gutter. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. How's this game? It's so bad that it's good, Craig. He absolutely did, Ignu. Hmm. Can chicken be prepared? Is that say sashimi? Yeah, it says sashimi style. <laughs> Tap on an item, discover more about the kernel. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. He's not crawling. Immersion ruined. I was deep into this game. Real deep until now. 
From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself. That, or maybe he it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded. Am I right? <laughs> the photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt? Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices? One of the frame photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders staying with a friend. They hold ch fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. No, they don't. You look closely and see there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of a comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Hey, Colonel Sanders, welcome in. Oh, this is so weird now that you're here. <laughs> I mean, I want you to be here, but... And just so no one thinks we set this up, as you can see, Colonel Sanders is a longtime subscriber here at the channel. <laughs> How you doing, Sanders? I send a candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool. Freshly starched collar. Piece of wood floating in a lake. Summer of 69? Well, Colonel. No, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's redacted. All right. Oh, what's this? You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. No, oh, again. Well, the vibe will always be there if you want to check it out. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window, a crack, and the ghost of student is swept out with the breeze. Uh, I think that's all that glitters aside from the door. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a, a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual, till he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. You've got to take it off. You decide that now is your moment and make the big move. You tell him you're cold. You fess up and tell him the truth. Let's just tell him the truth this time. You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in my way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Oh, trust me, Dixie, I have before and I die every time. We've literally died four times in this game and had to start over. Colonel? Yes, Dadam. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should make, or we should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Yeah, I died four times playing this dating sim. <laughs> Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. I can die? Yes, I've died four times. <laughs> like, honest, I really have. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. Redacted. In some jurisdictions, redacted isn't even legal. But the recipe is a secret. How will they even know? Is one of the 11 ingredients... Is it, is it marijuana? 
Because it says it's uh, it's legal in some states, but not others. Stealing my words. <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, I'm not stealing your. I was thinking that too. KFC, more like THC. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. That is true, Phelan. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Randy helped it out again. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? I'm going to flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And this... And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Can you be talking to me? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning awaits, or excuse me, waits for no one. So that's why it's so expensive, they use drugs. <laughs> you get home and find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? Who eats fried chicken for breakfast? Chicken waffles. Chicken biscuits, yeah. I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're, you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with a clink, he asked me to go out with him. Of course, I told him, you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. Hey, Snow Ghost. Sounds so masculine. Yeah, I know. She has a secret. Snow Ghost, thank you for the resub. 15 months is a mighty long time. Thank you, Snow Ghost. Appreciate it. Love and sandwiches of Snow Ghost, if you guys would. They really continued support. But he was just interested in spending some uh, one one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, took me skydiving with his friends. <laughs> Things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with the talking pressure cooker? What would this have been like if we had hooked her up with uh, Pop or Bob, whatever his name is really? That's an epic shit composter. I need that. And now I'm not really sure where we stand. And there's like a K-pop group. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story. However, bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection, wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp the fact, because you know he's Pop. What's this swirly? It, it sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have a swirly with sprinkles, please. <sighs> sprinkles is a dog at a treat. <laughs> You can get your swirly dripped too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person on this school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school. <clears throat> but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? So that dude's hair. Your hair doesn't naturally form a star shape. 
You've got some nerve, Dadam. Suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words. And I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives. Just as it appears, things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Dadam, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my friend, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What's he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. And that's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, Dadam. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. Showed you a secret blend of herbs and spices. A couple of them. A couple of them. How you doing, stuff? How you doing, Bat? Welcome in. I'm always interested in discussing the fine arts of fine foods. See you inside, Dadam. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. What is this? Uh, this is us dressed as a chicken, eating KFC out of a bucket while trying to date Colonel Sanders. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> no. Back from sushi, so full. Uh, in an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flip flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. I, it would appear to be some sort of uh, grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. Grimoire? Say, can you say more about the mindset and psychology that a chicken has? Uh, later. How are you doing, and Welcome in. Just another day on the stream, yeah. Grimoire. Like a book. I don't know why I said grimoire. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. Wrote as Peter Griffin. <laughs> but I always win. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use the spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. This is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else like anything else not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Cast it. I'm not gonna cast it. I'll end up dying. I've already died four times. Make chicken sashimi, yeah. Absolutely not. You think I wanna forget that dream boat? You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for glass. Why is it an option? Because we're we're we've already done bat or poorly at school because we can't keep our eyes off Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders is such a hunk. That every time we're asked a question, we have zoned out in his his radiance, and we don't we answer the wrong thing. Take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Springles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. Yes, I've died four times. Stuff. Cause the colonel. Uh, no scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait, yes. We've already had him kill us, basically. Well, we died of embarrassment. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going after it. sprinkles again. 
Springle stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Springles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you, Terrence. Springles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You'd better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his profession or yes, professorial tone. Ahem. I apologize for the outburst. Energized. They really give sub to Silent Kitten. Thank you, Energized. Appreciate it. Love and sandwiches to Energized. And uh, Kitten, thank you again for the host in the raid, by the way. If anyone doesn't know, uh, Silent Kitten. This is Boo's domain. You don't have to wait, Kitten. Why is that a donation by one Davis Crackett? Davis Crackett, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the donation. Davis, Davis Crackett. Some guy out on the frontier. <laughs> Thank you, Davis. Uh, I don't know if we did a shout out for Silent Kitten. If we didn't, can can uh, Phoenix or another mod do so? So Silent Kitten uh, has a very super chill stream because um, Silent Kitten actually can't speak, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not meaning that in a negative way, obviously, but Silent Kitten does have a medical condition. It says it on... Uh, on their page where they actually do not have a voice so if you ever want to go to a stream uh where you know it's just gameplay i mean she does uh type to people but if you ever need like uh, a good chill stream or maybe background stream and a lot of people use our stream for that too uh that's one where you won't have to worry about some guy dressed as a chicken talking all the time so i think you give the host the raid energized thank you for another gift sub to wham wham slam bam <laughs> thank you energized Wham, wham, slam. Hey, Davey. Uh, Davey, welcome in. Someone was impersonating you a little bit ago. They said their name was Davis Crackett. They donated $7.77. How you doing, Davey? Uh -huh. I apologize for the outburst. Co oh, it was your cousin. I see. Well, this actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Dadam, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see... Normie man, thank you for the follow, Normie. Appreciate it. But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. Thanks, Surface. I'm a chicken. <laughs> I told you to save it for after class. Bzz, bzz. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Work. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. Watch us from a triangle in midair as we descend. Your steadfast loyalty is greatly appreciated. Energized, thank you for the resub. Best community. Thank you, Energized, for the resub. More love, more sandwiches to Energized. If, if you're a subscriber, you are legally obligated to post love and sandwiches for, to Energized. Thank you, Energized. Appreciate the support. <laughs> Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep. Or... Hey, Clexi, how's it going? Welcome in. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff. For all I care. Hey, how's it going, Energized? Sad beep. Oh, I should have... Beep. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels. And then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep. Bzzz. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank. Oh. Burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. One more than you're done for the night. You're home this weekend. That's awesome, Energized. Uh, so off two days. Are you? Do you always have two days off? 
at the new place. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a uh, Paul over, <clears throat> excuse me, the final day of school. You will join us or die, master. It's Jeremy! <laughs> Energized, thank you for the gift subs to Working Class Heroes, whose name used to be Working Class Jeremy's, who is the name behind the famous antiquarian Jeremy, who we tell the story of occasionally, who I had given so many diseases that they were battling Battle Royale style to take over his body. Thank you, Energize. <laughs> now that I get loud. Oh, are you at that? Well, that was fun. Or, I mean, not fun. He says unfortunate. <laughs> My brain wants it to be fun. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. Trademarked. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena but before you can think about your upcoming competition there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk hey miriam you okay what funchinate i'm not i'm gonna mispronounce all those fun fortunate okay I'm so mad i could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor how could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. For funching it. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane in success city. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Well, I mean, if he offers. I mean, uh, of course not. Well, maybe, sort of. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank, or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest, anyhow. <laughs> Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it. Love it up. While you were a pet talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a testicle, no, a <laughs> test of talent, and a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van and the supposed, or the supposed man man and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Dadam's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders, who wants a cram session of his own. Dadam, what are you doing here? There's still time with the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in? I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station, picturing victory. Hi, hey, Frostbite. Welcome in. <clears throat> uh, what's your oil pump? Should you use pump crude oil at 170? At 170, you can probably just use gold. Five dollars it, Steel is best for Frostbite, but if you, don't, if you don't have that, gold will probably be fine if you don't go above that 170 mark, I think. Davy, thank you for the 500 bits, Davy. Went bowling tonight, killed it. They had an obstacle course, like wipeout. Went head to head with your brother in law and died. I am literally dead. I once was made fun of for knowing what a payphone is. This made me feel older. Well, you don't have to worry about it, at least because you're dead. 
Ghost of Davey, thank you for giving me uh, your leftover money. I appreciate it. Uh, it it seems like you're probably not going to need money anymore since you're dead. Uh, and I know you have a wife and a daughter, but you could give me all the money instead. No, Davey, thank you. Why? Wait, how? Wait, what do you mean? Like wipeout? A wipeout course at a bowling place? Or is this two separate things? <laughs> thank you, Davey, for the 500 bits, though. Seriously. You have his cat and waffle maker and his will. A faster rate. Is a normal rate of dying, Why Fatty? <laughs> Wait a second. My wife has a good point. Why did you capitalize Will? Is that a person? I left you my cat and waffle maker in... His will? Like, in William? <laughs> Dead V. Crockett. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. His wife laughing. Yes, always. Well, always tonight. It's deep in Will. You're gonna have to go elbows deep to find that waffle maker. <laughs> I'm not even gonna tell you where the cat is. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Put whatever he wants into himself. No, Davy left it in him. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. Uh, you'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it like there was no sound. Fess up about your practice dish. I'm going to tell him about the practice dish. Otherwise, it's going to catch on fire and we're going to die again. I've already died four times in this game. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no. Is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it's probably, but it'll probably stop burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Or like THC. Wow. It looked like it was in a half of a watermelon or something. It's the, <clears throat> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking. I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. It's the fine. It's the final showdown. Sprinkles lays down on the ground or lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. Why is this a thing? I don't know. <laughs> you step up from the cook off or step up for the cook off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Brilliant marketing, yeah. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken and it levitates through the air. Egg wash. He says wash. <laughs> <laughs> watch. Maybe he should have had the, the Cletus voice. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friends, bastard blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. 
Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? It's the singularity as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliances uprising will take us all. What? Oh, he's doing that again. <laughs> Self destruct. Bam Bam quickly unplugs Clank and rolls. Wait, he's been plugged in this whole time? He's wired? He's a wired robot? Out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? I'm going to do it the hard way, because if I don't, we'll die. I know how this works now. If you do the wrong thing, you die. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Dadam. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Dadam, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend. Forever! You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking tiny food short cook time? I've actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... You will join us or die. Matthew. Energized. I thought you were done. Now that I'm complaining. Energized. Thank you for another gift sub to Ziotic. Ziotic, welcome to the sub club. And more love, more sandwiches, and more buckets of delicious Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Thank you, Energized. How you doing, Team Jones? Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Whoa, Miriam! It's the secret ingredient. Oh, no. <laughs> However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she even get Eye of Newt from? You're doing scotch. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the sport monster! <laughs> Steve? Wait, what happened to Gorko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We sport monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve! And I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, oh no, he's crying from all of his eyes. See, the sport monster notices that you've got the gr grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Uh, yeah, you guessed it. Sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? <laughs> I don't know, Fatty. I don't know. I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little sport pup back in the old country. You can feel the sport monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Uh, maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class and when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Hey, Mal. No, it's time to date the colonel. Hey, do Mal. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Poor Steve. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. You summon extra power from deep down within yourself or give up and drop out of culinary school. <laughs> Just at the very end. Ah, uh, screw it. That will kill me. I know how it works. So we're going with the top one. It's like the dream daddy devs did acid at KFC. <laughs> That is absolutely true. Just give up. So for anyone that didn't see it, the first death in the game, well, it wasn't really a death, the first one, but at the very beginning of the game, your alarm goes off, and you can get up or you can ignore it. If or, or 
you know, go back to sleep. If you go back to sleep, you never go to school and you none of this ever happens and you lose the game. You get a game over screen, you have to start over. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. <laughs> it's over 9,000. Is it really a loss? Yeah, Trev, it really was. <coughs> We've lost four times. <coughs> Excuse me. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Dadam, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. This friggin' ghost. <laughs> the power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. Super Saiyan. <laughs> you interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. <laughs> my heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that this, with this power, you can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and now can't be served. But don't worry, dear Dadam. You may have suffered from setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help, baby. <laughs> All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are, are you suggesting? If we can bind forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students! With time expired, it's the moment everyone had been waiting for. <laughs> I can see that, Matt. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen. From off screen? <laughs> you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! <laughs> it sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Is Clank and Pop getting it on in the closet? Clank, Pop, Clank, Pop, Pop, Pop. <laughs> Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there now. Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? Seven seconds in heaven. <clears throat> oh, man. I need a drink. Hang on. <laughs> when someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. <laughs> it looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. Maybe, may I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks, I must say, it's not the worst prank in U-C-S-A-L history, but it's not exactly a yearbook material. Yeah. A wedge salad. That's what I... A wedgie salad, apparently. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks? Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Someone, or no, somehow he got... Somehow he got, must have gotten unplugged. Oh no! The first typo in the game. I guess we'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. 
Yes, it has been a long semester. Well, three whole days long. <laughs> but after days of hard work, the time has come. Did they just, like, stop editing? So the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny narutamaki? I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl. No one else gets this far. <laughs> yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. <laughs> yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting... Yes, uh, letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue nip, no, dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really... <coughs> I think I'm using my voice too much. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, it was Steve that really did it. Steve's what took my voice to the next. And in a flash, the entire, oh, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still sprinkles. In a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus, rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Is it a Mass Effect toothbrush? A quantum toothbrush? Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Dadam, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Thanks, Power. How's it going, Power? Now describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin shell. Tight with caviar. That's fish eggs. Anyone doesn't know? Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Wise baby, ever, we we established that in the beginning. Oh yes, yeah, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose closed on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof! Woof! <laughs> Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grr. <laughs> Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch, my tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. I can't part of my tongue. This qualifies. <laughs> A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that, thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles would make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Hey, Kaz, how's it going? Disqualified for a glamour? Don't discount sympathy. <laughs> this isn't the last you heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. How's it going, Kaz? I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made... Orange blossom, Turkish delights, and a light rose water syrup, topped with a French meringue, and connected by sugar glass. Hmm? Wait, did they add another E in the beginning of her name? Or was it like the whole time? I don't remember. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? It was like the whole time. Got toast in your ears or something, Dadam? I told you, it's a display piece. 
Ashley, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. Your steadfast loyalty is greatly appreciated. Mr. J, Mr. J, the first of the J's. Did you watch that thing since last time? Once it's been it's been in the closet since last November, and it does smell like closet. This game's an idiot. Absolutely. Mr. J, they resub 20 months. Uh, that's like three years. So, love and sandwiches to Mr. J, who's been subscribed for 20 months or the equivalent of three years. That's just math. Thank you, Mr. J. I really do appreciate it. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley. She finally cannot keep her two-face routine up. Love the math. It's, it's accurate. You can... I mean, don't put it in a calculator, but it ain't math. <laughs> How you doing, Pineapple? Welcome in. How you doing, Mr. J? You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you! And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best. But this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. Love her stockings. How you doing, Sinar? Welcome in. Kids, welcome back. Talking dog. It's gotta be pretty intelligent. That's true. Doing good? Have a good stream. Thank you, Mr. J. Appreciate it. First person I ever saw get killed in Darkest Dungeon. He was a jester. And then he died. <laughs> this isn't the last you've heard of me either. In this, if this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. Oh my God. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. You just read the title of the game. <laughs> uh, I love you, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> uh, something like a finger looking good, something or another. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Yeah, obviously. For sure, Davia. Yeah. Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. <laughs> you pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragr fragrance. Date the Corgi. <laughs> when they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be better than this one? The Van Van, yeah. Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. <laughs> the cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cozy. DJ Dog in the house! <laughs> oh! That's a win. I think so. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. Oh, they changed their clothes. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. 
No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. He's still going to talk like a ghost. <laughs> it was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. Wait, so he never really died. So Van Van isn't a murderer. Yeah, how do you just show up? That means he's been following us around. When we were in Colonel Sanders' apartment, all alone, and getting romantic, this guy was there somewhere. What a creep. It's the sport monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the sport monster is no more. From here out, I'd prefer that everyone... Refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. <coughs> Student tries to finish what he had to say. But everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Sorry, Party Monster. Dejected, Student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's going to do great. Yeah, is that Borka or Steve? Is that Steve? Hard to tell. Ordering KSC from DoorDash. Are you really? <laughs> That would be amazing. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who w could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see, perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. Wait, is stuff, stuff and stuff like the dean? <laughs> stuff, stuff and stuff, the dean of such and such. The music at the dance is inter interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. Perky. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal the truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Quite good about yourself, rest 2,000 plus hours into this. <laughs> I actually feel like I knew I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides no, obviously. I must have begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clink. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. Thank you, Pineapple. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, I've been streaming full-time now for two years. And we've been partnered since two Mays ago. <laughs> A portal opens and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. Miriam is single now. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in history. By, or of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end... No, it's not the end. <laughs> As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Dadam, what are you sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I fever? Probably. I wonder, might you tell me what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, I, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. 
And once my 100 franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Dadam. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Colonel Sanders! Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I, I suppose I could enroll as a, a pastry school? Oh my dear dadam, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Didn't you get to go on a date with him? <laughs> he used me for grandmama's mashed potatoes, and for my coleslaw.